Hi, this is Sebastian again from CodingTheSmartWay.com and today in this new video I'm going to talk about a new web application bundler which is called Parcel. And if you have been working in web development for quite some time you might already be familiar with um, application bundlers like Browserify or Webpack for example and all those bundlers help you to um, to pack your web application, the assets of your web application, static and dynamic assets, dependencies of your web application in so-called bundles and make those bundles available so that you can easily deploy your application. Furthermore, um, web application bundlers can perform many more tasks. For example, um, you can uh, run tasks as part of the build process like post, uh, code processing, structuring, uh, for example, transpiling, um, that are typically uh, tasks which are executed by web application bundler. Uh, but however, most of today's web application bundlers like Webpack um, are uh, struggling with a very complicated configuration structure. So if you are dealing with those bundlers, you will need quite some time to get the configuration of the bundlers correct. And uh, most of uh, the web developers I know are at some point are struggling with uh, the configuration setup of those bundlers, uh, especially when uh, your application grows and it becomes more complicated. And uh, there now is Parcel. Um, and the promise is that Parcel is blazing fast and that you will need zero configuration to get it running. So I think it's worth to take a deeper look inside and that is exactly what we're going to do now in this video. So stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is to take a look at the Parcel a website and the website can be found at parceljs.org. Um, you can see it here and if you take a look at the start page <coughs> Uh, and scroll a little bit down here, you can see uh, here are the main features highlighted uh, for Parcel. It starts here with uh, saying that Parcel has a blazing fast bundle time. And uh, that is true because Parcel uses multiple worker processes to ensure that the compilation process is executed in parallel uh, on, on multiple cores. And uh, furthermore, Parcel makes use of a caching mechanism, um, which further optimizes the build process. Um, Parcel is bundling all your assets. You can see it here. Uh, Parcel offers out-of-the-box support for common project assets like JavaScript files, uh, cascading style sheets, HTML files, and so on. Um, and the best is you do not need to install any plugins to make sure that Parcel is adding those assets to the bundles it creates. Um, Parcel is applying an automatic transformation. Um, so that means by default Parcel is performing code transformations using uh, Babel, Post CSS and Post HTML for example. Uh, those all are libraries which are taking uh, the code you write as an input and apply some transformation of that code uh, for the output. Uh, Parcel do need zero configuration for uh, code splitting. Code splitting means um, that Parcel is splitting the assets of your project into multiple bundles if not all assets are needed uh, at once, so when your application is loaded initially. Uh, by using this approach, code splitting, um, not all assets needs to be loaded uh, first and the user of the web application will um, only need um, some parts and those parts are built into one bundle and the other parts which are needed later are um, compiled into another bundle so that at first loading the website, you only need uh, to load uh, one bundle and um, uh, the web application, um, which is set up in such a way, will have a much faster loading time so that the user experience will be much better and uh, the code is loaded as needed, so lazy loading. Um, Parcel has a hot module replacement. Um, Parcel is watching 
um, if the development web server is running, Parcel is watching for code changes and uh, replaces modules automatically and Parcel comes with a friendly error logging. So now you have a brief overview of what are the main features of Parcel. Let's get started and the first step we need to take is to install Parcel on your system. So Parcel can be installed via the command line and uh, to install the Parcel package we are using the node package manager. Um, you should make sure before beginning the installation that you have the most updated version of Node.js and um, npm installed. And uh, if that's the case, uh, we can start right away. Um, the installation command is npm install minus g for installing a parcel globally on your system. And then uh, you need to um, give the package name here and the package name is parcel dash bundler. So that is the command, simply execute this command and parcel is installed on your system. I have already installed parcel, so I do not need to execute it now. You can also use um, yarn if you prefer to use yarn as a package manager. The corresponding command will then be yarn global at parcel dash bundler. So this will have the same effect. Um, it installs parcel globally on your system and uh, you can use both commands. Uh, you can decide to use npm or you can decide to use yarn. Um, once having installed Parcel successfully, we can now go on and uh, yeah, create a new project and initiate this project to work with Parcel as a web application bundle. So at first we need to create a new empty project directory. Um, so let's say we would name uh, this directory uh, parcel demo one uh, then change into the newly created directory and of course it's empty and the first thing we now uh, need to do here is to initiate this project um, with a new package.json file to do so I'm saying npm init-y and uh, you can see it here, it creates uh, a new package.json file, that's the content of the file. And if I now um, take a look inside this folder, you can see it's no longer empty, the package.json file is there. So to begin with, let's add um, an index.html file and uh, let's start um, the code editor so that we can uh, write code inside that file and in my case i'm using visual studio code as my preferred code editor so that i can say code uh, dot here to open visual studio code um, with the current directory opened so this takes me to the developer you can see it here uh, here we can see two files are uh, there, package.json, index.html, and let's start to write some in uh, some HTML code here in to index.html. Here in uh, Visual Studio Code, I'm able to use Emmet, uh, which gives me the opportunity of using code snippets. And to start with a basic HTML structure here in my file, I simply need to type in an exclamation mark here and use this um, Emmet abbreviation. So this expands to the following, which is a basic HTML structure. And let's uh, do some changes here to that structure. Let's remove all the meta elements here from the head section. I do not need those meta elements for my um, demo right now. Let's uh, change the title here. Um, maybe we can say um, parcel demo 01. Um, like so and here inside my body section let's add a diff element with id assigned of message uh, like so and uh, let's add um, a script element here to include um, a javascript file i'm going to create in the next step and that file is named app.js okay like so and now of course we need to add that new file here to the project as well so app.js <clears throat> and uh, now inside that file let's write uh, one line of javascript code just to demonstrate that uh, this is um, 
automatically um, added to the bundle parcel is creating. Um, let's say document dot get element by ID and uh, we have created the div element with ID of message. So now let's select this element by passing in message here to the get element by ID method. And let's select the property inner text and set the inner text to the string hello world. Okay, like so, let's save it. Um, okay, everything is in place. Okay, so we are ready. We have one HTML file in our project, one JavaScript file, um, and the output we are now expecting to get is uh, the text hello world because this line of code is selecting the div element we have placed inside our body section and uh, adding the text hello world inside that div element so that this text should appear in the browser output. And to check if everything is working correctly we now need to start up um, the uh, development web server which Parcel is providing. Um, and that is the next step and then we will see the result in the browser. So to start up a parcel and to start up the development web server I've opened up the integrated command line here so that we can do it from within Visual Studio Code and uh, the command now which is available because we have installed parcel globally on your system is a parcel command. So I can now say parcel and I need to provide it with one argument here on the command line and that is the entry point of our application and at the moment we have just uh, a few files in our application and the entry point is of course index.html so this is the command to start up the project so I'm hitting return here and you can see it's starting up the project um, on port 1234 so I can copy that address here, switch back to the browser, pass it in, and you can see uh, we are getting the result. I was expecting to get hello world is printing out and uh, that is the proof that everything has worked as expected. Parcel has taken the HTML file and the JavaScript file, bundled it automatically without needing to configure anything and created the bundle and uh, the web application is working as expected. So if I'm now switching back to my editor, you can see that two, file, uh, two folders have been added here to uh, my projects directory. The first one is the .cache folder, which is used for the internal parcel file caching mechanism. Um, but uh, much more interesting at the dist folder because that is the output folder of parcel. And you can see here two files are included in my output. We have one bundle created here, one JavaScript bundle, um, and one index.html file. So Parcel has created one bundle here because we have only one asset which goes into that bundle. And of course um, has included our uh, static HTML file here, which is the entry point of our application as well as this in this folder. And so you can see the dist folder is filled and parcel is working and creating bundles as needed without needing to include any configuration in our project, which is of course very great. <clears throat> so in the next step, let's extend our sample project a little bit and uh, let's make use of modules, of JavaScript modules and parcel supports out of the box um, both um, both um, syntaxes, it supports common JS and ES6 modules and um, you can use whatever you want, you do not need to change any configuration because of course we have no configuration uh, for Parcel yet in our project and uh, in the following example I'm using the ES6 uh, module syntax and to get started let's create or let's add a new file here to the project and call it lib.js and I'm writing a little bit of JavaScript code here inside. So I need to use the export keyword here. So export function and we are defining a square uh, function which takes one parameter and this function is returning uh, the square. So return x 
multiplied by x. And uh, so that is my module. Uh, the function is exported so that I'm able to import this function in any other file. And now I can go back to app.js and add on top of the file um, the corresponding import statement. So now I can say import and I do a named import here. Square from the lib file. And now Square is available for access here in app.js. And I can change, uh, for example, the output here a little bit and adapt the text, which is added uh, to the div element, which uh, ID message. Um, and I will not use have a world. Instead, I will use a text, the square of two is, and then add the uh, the um, return value of the square function, which is called for the input parameter of two. So let's save it. You can see it here. It has updated the bundle automatically. And now I can go to the browser again and you can see it has been reloaded without needing to do anything manually. And now the output is the square of two um, is, okay, we have a typo there, not ID, let's change it to is. So is four and that is a proof the square function has been called, the module is accessible, uh, the module, the lib.js file has been added to the bundle um, as well and uh, it was able uh, or we was able uh, here to, to make use of that function which is exported in lib.js inside of app.js. So if you need to add dependencies to your project, uh, that's also no problem and Parcel will add um, the needed external dependencies uh, once installed to your project automatically to the bundles um, as well. And to demonstrate this, let's add uh, the jQuery library to our project um, by using um, the node package manager again I can say npm install jQuery and use the dash dash save option as well to add that dependency to the package.json file Okay, you can see a node underscore modules folder um, has been created. Um, if I take a look here inside the node underscore modules folder, you can see the jQuery dependency package is installed. And uh, now we can make use of jQuery um, in our project, uh, of course. And then Parcel is recognizing that this dependency is needed by our project and uh, is adding jQuery automatically to the uh, bundles. So uh, to make use of jQuery, I can add here in app.js another import statement and make jQuery available. So I'm importing it as um, dollar sign from jQuery, like so. Um, and now I will rewrite here app.js a little bit to make it a little bit more dynamic. Uh, let's first uh, define um, a variable here. So let e equals two. And then I'm defining a function, which is setting uh, the message text. Um, the function takes one parameter, which is the text. And then it's uh, using jQuery to select um, our div element with ID message assigned. And the jQuery syntax is as follow. So that is equivalent to uh, the document um, dot get element by ID um, method call you can see here. And with jQuery, it's possible to do it a little bit shorter. And I can uh, set the inner text here by calling the text method and passing in the text. So now I have a function available. 
And uh, first of all, I'm now using this function to set the text initially. And I would like to um, um, to use basically this text here. Okay. But um, I would like to make it more dynamic, not only um, to output the square of two, but to output the square of whatever is in um, E. And uh, I can do so. So I first need to change um, the input parameter of square, of course, to E. And then I need to uh, change the text here as well. So like so. And uh, now I would like to extend the functionality a little bit. Whenever the user clicks on uh, the text which is outputted, it should increment um, E and uh, therefore increment the output as well. And to do so, I'm using jQuery again. So I'm selecting um, the diff element with, with ID message again and then i'm uh, registering um, an event handler for the click event so like so okay and then i'm incrementing e and then setting the message text again and i can just copy and paste it from here delete this one so save it once again check it here uh, okay no errors the bundle has been uh, built parcel um, has been executed successfully and now i can go back to the browser and check the output again and now you can see i can click here on the text and it's updating the output for every click. So of course, Parcel takes also care of your uh, CSS and SCSS assets. Um, those assets are as well automatically um, recognized and added to the bundles as needed. Um, you need to import uh, the CSS assets um, in your JavaScript or HTML file, of course, so that uh, Parcel is able to uh, recognize that this asset is needed for your project. Uh, let's try it out and add some CSS code to our project. Of course, first of all, we need a CSS file. Let's add, no, not, not here, just add it to the main directory here. Okay. Uh, let's add styles.css and let's add some CSS text first of all for uh, the body um, element. Let's add um, a background color and set the background to uh, powder blue, for example. Okay. And then uh, let's add some uh, CSS styling to the div element uh, with ID message assigned. Uh, let's give it a color, a foreground color of blue. Let's increase the font size a little bit, 3EM. And let's do a text align to center. Now we need to make the styles.css file available in index.html by adding the corresponding link uh, element here in the head section. Okay, like so. Okay, so you can see the bundle is rebuilding, uh, parcel is running. 
you can see it here in the dist folder now that it is ready the output um, is now including a css bundle as well and if i check the result in the browser you can see that the styling is applied and the output has changed so um, you can al also use of course as css code if you would like um, we can try it out um, of course again um, i need to add a new file here to my project let's call uh, this file styles.scss and uh, write down um, as css code here for example i can now first of all define uh, variables um, that i will later on use in my uh, styling um, let's define a message color variable here which i set to blue and uh, let's define um, a bg color which I'm setting to uh, powder blue. Okay. So now uh, with uh, those two uh, variables defined, I can now uh, write uh, the same uh, styling code as seen before in my uh, styles.css file, but um, I'm not uh, assigning uh, the color um, the color values now directly instead I'm using message color and bg color uh, so let's uh, maybe copy this code here insert it here again then I'm removing this one and um, I'm using bg color here instead and I'm removing the blue color here as well and I'm using message color instead so I'm making use of the variables which is a feature of rcss and now of course I need to include uh, the styles.rcss file in my project but before doing so I first of all need to remove um, the link element here because I do not want to include styles.css any longer um, okay, I can check it here in the browser. You can see the styling is um, gone. And uh, to um, be able to add an SCSS file here to um, my application, um, and in order to make sure that Parcel is compiling um, that asset correctly and creating the corresponding bundle, um, I need to uh, first make sure that another package is installed and the package which is needed here is the node-sass package. So let's install the package. I'm stopping the web server here for a moment. I'm installing it here inside my project folder. npm install node-sass. So it's downloading the dependency and installing it into my node underscore modules folder. And once it is ready, I can include the scss asset, for example, in my JavaScript file by adding another import statement. Okay, here we are. Now let's go to app.js and add the following import statement here import um, styles.scss okay like so and now i need to restart um, the parcel web server again of course so the bundle is um, built as you can see here and once it is finished we can check it again in the browser so I'm switching to Chrome again and uh, here you can see the styling is back so our S CSS asset is working and uh, that is the proof that uh, Parcel was able to recognize this new asset and add it to the uh, output without needing to include any configuration we just need to add that one um, additional package 
and everything else is working out of the box. So like many other bundles, Parcel is able to apply transformation to the assets you have in uh, the project when building, as mentioned in the beginning. Um, out of the box, Parcel has already support uh, for um, many um, common transformations and transpilers um, built into um, built into the uh, project. And for example, you can use um, Babel to transform your JavaScript code. You can also use Post CSS to transform your um, CSS code, and you can use Post HTML to transform your HTML code. Uh, there are common libraries uh, which are often used to um, apply transformations to um, to code and Parcel automatically runs those types of transformations when the corresponding module is available in the project. So you need to install it uh, via npm again. And uh, a small um, configuration file is added, but it's really a very small file. We'll see it in a minute. And uh, in the following example, um, we will discover how to use um, um, Parcel and how to set up Parcel um, for a React project, and of course you know a React project is requiring um, a bubble transformation to um, um, to transpile the React code um, into corresponding JavaScript code, and we will uh, set up a new project um, and um, configure Parcel to make use of bubble to do the necessary JavaScript and JSX configurations which are needed for React. So if you have been working with React before, you might know um, getting started with React has always been a difficult task um, when including the corresponding uh, Webpack uh, configuration, for example. Um, there have been projects like uh, create a React app, for example, to make it a little bit easier and to generate a corresponding Webpack configuration out of the box. Um, however, if your React project is growing and becomes uh, more project and you want to include um, further build tasks, um, you have to deal at some point with the very complex Webpack configuration and with Parcel now this is not needed. Uh, you do not need to uh, use any script for generating uh, the bundler configuration. We can start right away and that is what I will demonstrate now. So let's uh, begin with a new project directory here. Uh, for example, uh, we name it uh, React <coughs> Parcel Demo. Let's change into that directory um, and use npm init-y again to initiate this uh, project uh, directory and add a package.json file. So that, that is the first step and that is a, um, the requirement we need to fulfill to be then able to use npm to add further dependencies. Um, and uh, now React do need um, the following dependencies. First of all, I need to install the React library itself. And the way I can do it here is uh, via npm install-save uh, React. So this is downloading uh, React to um, the node underscore modules folder, adding it to package.json. Uh, um, next, let's install in the same way uh, react-dom. Then um, let's install um, uh, the bubble packages we are um, we are need with npm install dash dash save dev this time and the first package is called bubble uh, dash preset dash react Okay, here we are, and the second bubble package is called bubble-preset-env. <clears throat> so here we are, all the packages 
um, and all dependencies have been added successfully to our project and um, now we're ready to go uh, let's open the editor again so um, here back in the editor let's add first of all the small Babel configuration file we do need in order to um, make Babel uh, work with parcel and the file is called um, dot um, bar or rc so within the file the configuration code is um, the follow as follows so we need to say presets and then assign an array here uh, because we're using two presets uh, first is the env and second is react so this is all. This is the configuration which is needed just to tell Parcel to make use of both packages. Now we can start to create the application itself. And uh, first of all, um, we do need uh, two more files here in our project. The first file is index.html. Okay. And the second file we do need is uh, the corresponding JavaScript file. Let's say we name it app.html. JS. So inside index.html I need a basic uh, HTML structure like before. I use the Emmet abbreviation here and delete the meta tags from the head section. Um, change the title in um, React parcel demo. Um, in the body section include a div element with ID um, of app assigned and um, a script element to include um, the app.js file okay so uh, this is what we need inside index.html and now we can continue to create our uh, react component in app.js so first of all i need two import statements First, we need to import React from um, React. Next, I need to import React DOM from um, React uh, dash DOM. Okay, and then I can create uh, the component class. Let's name uh, the component. Um, hello message and it extends from react.component so I need to include the render um, function here and return uh, the uh, template code um, the JSX code so let's say return and we are returning a div element which includes the text hello and then is printing out the value of one uh, component property which is called name and I can access this property by saying this dot props dot name so this is react syntax JSX syntax so closing this diff um, element here and then finally here below the class implementation I need to add it to my uh, website um, so let's uh, declare uh, the mount uh, variable here and let's uh, assign document get element um, by ID and select the element with ID app we just created and then use the react DOM um, um, render method to um, insert the hello message component and um, I'm supplying hello message here with uh, the uh, component uh, property name and setting it to my name like so
Okay, here we are. So this should now output um, hello Sebastian. And uh, of course, we now need to start up the parcel um, development web server again and then check the output in the browser. So I can start up the server again with parcel and pass over uh, the entry point of our application. And again, it's index.html. Uh, starting up the web server at port 1234. Um, just uh, copy that URL again. Um, just check it here in, in the dist folder. You can see the bundle has been created. Index.html is available. And now we can check it in our browser if the React application is working. Um, and you can see it here, the dynamic output from our React component is generated and outputted in the browser. So um, you can see it, the React application is working without needing to uh, include any special complicated configuration um, like you would need to do with Webpack in our application. Parcel makes everything very easy and you can set up a React application uh, without all the hurdles known from Webpack. So, very great. So, thanks very much for watching. This was Sebastian from CodingTheSmartWay.com and I hope you do like my videos and uh, if that's true, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please also don't forget to visit my website at CodingTheSmartWay.com and I hope very much to see you in the next video. Bye.